Today on Hearts of Heroes, a string of vicious tornadoes rips through central Tennessee. It was probably just a matter of seconds when everything blew up. <laughs> Creating a hundred mile scar of destroyed homes and businesses. We heard glass breaking up here and the house was coming apart. Plus, when a giant blaze threatens a pet store, strangers step up to rush to the rescue. It was terrifying because we knew we had 86 puppies in the store at the time. But can these unlikely heroes save the day? Day or night, rain or shine, that's what heroes do, save the day. In March of 2020, just east of Nashville, one of the worst tornado outbreaks in Tennessee state history tortured towns like Mount Juliet. For one couple, a faithful phone call was about to warn them that they were directly in the line of fire. Just 17 miles from the country music capital of Nashville, Tennessee, you'll find the quiet suburb of Mount Juliet. The community is really close knit and it's just really grown a lot and it has that really small town feeling, but it's got everything else that goes with it, and it's just great people. But in the late evening of March 2nd into the early morning of March 3rd, something vicious would tear this community apart. Life changes in a split second, as they say. The day of the tornado was kind of overcast, and we saw in the news there was bad weather going on up in Kentucky, which is probably 50 miles north of here. But it was a relatively calm day, regular day. As everyone settled in for the evening, the forecast, unfortunately, verified. At 11.20 p.m., a tornado watch was issued. We had fallen asleep. Jerry was watching TV, and I was in our bedroom. And my phone went off with the weather alert. And I was watching it on TV, and I saw where the tornado was coming through downtown, which is about 15 minutes from here. Across town, Bill Wallace and his wife, Shirley, got an urgent call from their son. He said, are you guys in the basement? And we said, no. And he said, well, you need to get down there. There's a tornado almost on, on top of you. Bill and Shirley rushed downstairs with only moments to spare. We get up and go to the basement. And I remember hearing the siren go off when we were going downstairs. If you are ever caught in a tornado, one of the safest places to be is below ground in a basement or storm cellar. But if you don't have one of those, get inside a small closet near the center of the home, or even your bathtub. If it gets ugly, you need to be as prepared as possible for what comes. With sirens blaring across town, Jerry and Karen Warden were preparing for impact. Karen gathered their keys, wallets, and phones and set up refuge in the bedroom closet. Meanwhile, Jerry scrambled to find a flashlight. And the power went out. And I was screaming, going, where are you? Get in here. And just as he came around the corner, the door slammed. And I thought he slammed it, but it was the wind and he made it in the closet just in time. Down in the Wallace's basement, Bill and Shirley could hear that storm approaching. Everything went dark, and then we heard the noise coming, and then we heard glass breaking up here, and the house was coming apart. So the walls started coming in. The cabinet came off of the wall downstairs and hit both of us and knocked us to the floor. Meanwhile, Karen Warden and her husband were holed up in their bedroom closet as the tornado focused in on their home. He put his arm around this leg, and I heard the wind, and I said, it's here. And, the, and then he just said, hold on, and the wind, the house just all started shaking, and I was screaming. And then we hit the floor, and that was it. The tornado had picked up the warden's home, threw it more than 12 feet in the air, and slammed it down, crushing it around them. It was probably just a matter of seconds when everything blew up. <laughs> Coming up, 
The tornadoes leave endless destruction in their wake. She was thinking we had a hole in the roof, and then she realized, well, we, the house is gone. And later, the lives of dozens of helpless animals hang by a thread as fire rages just feet from a pet store. People were running up to me, screaming, you know, what about the puppies? we got to get the puppies. But first, a safety tip to help you and your family. Practice makes perfect, and that especially applies to practicing to be prepared for disasters. Having multiple evacuation routes planned in advance can help you evade disaster in threatening situations. Practicing these routes with all family members so that the routine can help save precious time in the event of disaster. Take it from the heroic professionals and do what is necessary to ensure you and your family's well-being. You can't predict disaster, but you can certainly prepare for it. The time is now. In the early morning hours of March 3rd, the quiet Nashville suburb of Mount Juliet, Tennessee, was being terrorized by tornadoes. Jerry and Karen Warden took shelter in their bedroom closet. When the storm finally passed, they were shocked by the devastation. As you could tell, the winds and everything started dying down, but the rain was still pretty bad. And she was thinking we had a hole in the roof, and then she realized, well, we, the house is gone. Miraculously, they both walked away, bruised and battered, but survived. Meanwhile, across town, the raging winds trapped Bill Wallace's wife, Shirley, under a heavy cabinet in their basement. She couldn't move and maneuver the way I was able to. But I got the flashlight, and I flashed it around, and I told her, there's no way we're going to get out of here. We're going to have to wait until someone comes. Even though it's pitch black, you began to see the severity of the incident that had happened. Houses that you've been in, and now that house is on the ground. Rescuers found Bill and Shirley in a pile of debris that had once been their home. They immediately sprung into action. They got my wife out first and uh, carried over. The only thing we had on was the clothes that we went to bed in. Some gentleman took off a hoodie sweatshirt, and she put that hoodie sweatshirt on so she could have a little bit of warmth. The system raked the region for 36 hours and became the sixth costliest tornadic event in the United States. Still, folks like the Wallaces and the Wardens know just how lucky they were to survive. We hear the phrase a lot, life is precious. But sometimes take it for granted and we shouldn't. <laughs> no. no, we shouldn't. With the help of our sponsor, Belfort Property Restoration, the wardens are also rebuilding and looking to the future. Karen, tell me what happened that night. How did this come to be? We didn't know there were going to be storms that night. And my telephone went off with the alarms that there was a tornado spotted downtown. So I went and woke him up, and I said, we've got about 10 minutes before it hits Mount Juliet. He said, go ahead and get in the closet, get the dog. So I had the dog, the dog wasn't leaving us. So I just took off running as fast as I could, which not very fast, <laughs> and then ran into the closet and kind of jumped and jumped on top of her. And then our house just started shaking, and it shook, and we just held on, and then all of a sudden we went, boom. And that's when the house just fell. And then we were just getting wet. And we and, and I thought, okay, there's just a hole in the roof somewhere yeah, or it part was of the roof. Still pouring pretty. And then I looked up and I told him, I said, we don't have a house. We don't have a roof. There's nothing. It's hard to believe that anybody could have got up and walked out of here. Yeah, I was amazed that after looking at all of that, that just that closet even though it fell down around behind us, that we didn't get injured. I had a bump on my head, and he had a scratch on his foot. He was sitting out here barefoot waiting for me to bring him some shoes, because he didn't have shoes. His shoes fell apart, and a man from Gallatin. Yeah, he was some kind of first responder. I don't know, he was plain clothes, but his truck had the lights on it and stuff, and he just come over and shook my hand, gave me some boots. Yeah, and any boots to work in. So he had those boots for, well, he still has them. Yeah. Yeah, so Best pair of boots I've ever had. 
here you are. If you had a chance to see that first responder, what would you say to him today? I probably remember him forever. You guys are resilient, I'll tell you that, because I'm standing here, I'm looking at this, and to think you were right about in the middle of this pile of debris. Yes, sir. That's where we were. Yeah, basically. And, and that you got up to walk out, out of here. Yeah. This is unbelievable. I'm guessing that this proves that all of the material things that we think of and, and strive for and want and, and go out and get, really, at the end of the day, don't account for that much when, thank God, the two of you can be standing here together after this. Yeah, I, I felt like, I did feel like we were going to be OK. I don't know what made me say it, but I just felt like, I just felt like, you know, we're going to get through this. and. <laughs> you guys are something. You really are. It'd be interesting to see what, what's ahead for you guys, because there's something. There's something ahead. Coming up, when a fire hits a pet store in Danbury, Connecticut, unsuspecting heroes rush in. I was just getting a little anxiety and terrified that, like, what if we don't get these dogs out? There are many ways to define a hero, but the willingness to jump in and save a life is certainly at the top of the list. So when a fire broke out next to a pet store in Connecticut, firefighters, police officers, and just folks passing by reacted so quickly, they saved the lives of dozens of animals. With a population of 80,000, Danbury is the seventh largest city in Connecticut and one of the most diverse cities in the country. One of its beloved businesses is Puppy Love, a local landmark for 25 years owned by Nancy Silverman and her husband, Sean. Over the years, we've had people come back for second, third, and fourth dogs, believe it or not. One evening, Nancy and her employees closed up shop like normal, and then they went home. Across the street, good friends Jonathan Villa and Eric Walsh were celebrating their new business venture at a popular restaurant. So we went out to have a nice dinner. We had our laptops with us. We were getting some work done. And then one of the waitresses came over and said, the building next door is on fire. So we went outside and you just saw flames like 30 feet in the air. Dispatch received a phone call from people on scene stating that there was a fire on the roof. We went out to the rig, got dressed, started heading out the door. We got a call that there were huge flames behind our store. The first thing we thought of was the puppies, the puppies. Thinking the exact same thing, Eric and Jonathan leapt into action. We start thinking, wow, that's a bunch of puppies. It's late. You know what I mean? Like, someone's got to do something. Motivated to help, they rushed over to a group of people that were literally trying to break into the store. Hurdle Defense ran over there. People had grabbed like a statue and were trying to use the statue to ram the glass open. And it just got to the point where I was just getting a little anxiety and terrified that like, what if we don't get these dogs out? The compassion these people showed for the animals in distress is truly astounding. It's not a thought, it's a reaction. To want to help those in need, that's the calling of a true hero. En route to the call, Lieutenant Miguel was struck by the scope of that blaze. Got about a quarter mile down the road and I could see a large glow in the sky and with very turbulent smoke. So it indicated there was a very big fire going on. With the fire growing, the determined volunteers finally forced their way into the pet store. Jump in, there's just cages everywhere. 40, 50 cages spread here, spread there, spread some towards the back. So then we start from the back, moving all the cages towards the front. Moments later, the Danbury Fire Department arrived. As soon as I stepped off the engine, people were running up to me, screaming, you know, what about the puppies? We got to get the puppies. I said to the guy, yeah, you can start getting the puppies, because I knew we needed to make our attack around back and try and get water on this. Coming up, while firefighters battle the blaze, can the volunteer rescuers save the puppies in need? But first, another safety tip to help you and your loved ones. As civilians, our instincts to help may override our own personal safety in a disaster situation. However, 
It's important to realize that running in may not be the safest approach. Members of the public are imperative to a safer future, but be careful not to become part of the emergency and thus become another potential rescue for first responders. So heed the advice and instruction from our heroic first responders. Their training and education is what makes them so successful and keeps all of us in our community safe. On the night of January 3rd, 2019, a large fire broke out in a small warehouse in Danbury, Connecticut. The flames were merely a matter of yards from a beloved pet store. It was terrifying because we knew we had 86 puppies in the store at the time. So when we heard the word fire, we didn't know until we got here that the flames were very, very large. It was housing almost 90 puppies. I mean, that's a lot of lives to actually get out of there. Fortunately for the dogs, there were some folks that were eating nearby. They broke into the store and started evacuations even before the fire department got there. We must have had five people between the back of the store and the front door, and then another five to 10 people outside getting them across the street. And everybody was just talking and really communicating and working together, it was amazing. When we got to the front door, we were met by like 20 people inside the store, and they were trying to pull dogs out, and it was very chaotic. I'm born and raised here, and I mean, it's a pretty strong community, and they weren't taking no for an answer. When they were asking me, should we get the puppy suit? It didn't matter if I said no, step back. They were gonna get in there. While the Danbury doggy rescuers did their self-appointed duty, the fire department set up out back. They utilized an impressive amount of resources to safely contain the damage and make sure the fire didn't spread. We had about 30 firefighters. There were probably five or six engines. It took quite a few people. So we went into the store and the civilians were doing a good job of moving the puppies out. They weren't in any relative danger at that point. So we let them continue doing that. Many of us want to volunteer our services during an emergency, but it's critical to remember that our first responders are trained professionals and they are always in charge of the scene. In this case, they allowed the citizens to help rescue the puppies, but always follow their direction. They're there to keep you safe too. So when we got them all out the front door, I mean, the street was blocked off at this time. You could see the flames from down the street and it was smoky all over. So we had probably about 60 cages all over the road. It was just every type of dog came a petting zoo. Other people that end up stopping came to help and everyone had a part and everybody was willing to give a hand and make sure to get those dogs out of there. Inside, by the back door, firefighter Mackey was maintaining the perimeter. The door was getting hot and the fire was actually starting to come through the door into the store. If the door melted or burnt away and let smoke and fire into the store, it would be bad for the puppies and the civilians in there because it would have caught fire rather quickly. But he locked it down with the help from a colleague. Firefighter Croswell came over and he had a hook on him and we were able to loop it around the door and use that to hold it shut. By this point, all 86 puppies were safely out of the building. They were then sheltered in an empty store offered up by a neighbor as the community came out to support the group effort. It was amazing how an experience like that could really bring people together. And you could feel it was, it was so heartfelt in that moment. Um, and it's just kind of seeing everybody else take action really made you want to take action and do more. It's important that in this day and age, we all look out for one another because there are so many instances when that's not the case. Yeah, we're just doing our jobs. I think the real heroes that day were the civilians. They were just enjoying a night out with their friends and family. That's not their job and they really went above and beyond to try to help in a pretty desperate situation. It shows the caring and the humanity that they have. Awesome job, oh, saving all these puppies. The owner was just really, really thankful for everything that happened, so it was real touching, you know, and I was just glad to be able to be there and be a part of it and help. Between the firemen and the community, it was amazing what type of strength they had and what type of support we have. It was wonderful. It's nice to see in this day and age that people still do the right thing.
In so many disasters, we hear about the survivors, but we don't always get to know the heroes behind the rescue. We're so grateful we get to celebrate these brave men and women and can't wait to do it again next time on Hearts of Heroes. Thanks for watching.